first of all, huge, huge, huge congratulations, JJB MBE. How does that sound? How does that sound to you? Yeah, mate, massive honour. We were joking about that last night. I um, just let my in-laws know that I'll be having a quiet Zoom meeting in the morning, and uh, they said exactly the same. I think a lot of talks that I've given in schools and community clubs have talked about how long my name is and how my, uh, my the supporting fans at Rhino shot my name down to JJB and, uh, and all those female letters to add on there. But, mate, massive honour, massive honour, really proud. Um, most of you guys have seen me from being... A young kid, you know, you've seen me grow up at Rhinos, you've documented and watched the journey that I've been on. And I'm sure you've, you've heard me many a time talk about how privileged I feel uh, and how grateful and how much gratitude I've got for that opportunity to go on a journey with a, an unbelievable group of individuals in a really special environment. And on the occasion, I've maybe quite abstractly segued on uh, this idea of being a medieval romanticist. I know I've, I've used that phrase a few times. Um, and a big fan of Plantagenet history. And whilst that, that's not relevant in 2021, you know, I suppose in terms of personal accolades, that's as close as you're ever uh, going to get. And, uh, and, and so in a, the, boy, the boy inside me, the excited young kid, sees it a, a lot like that. I'm, I was at Conway Castle yesterday buying a few little bits of uh, merchandise as well, living up to that sort of uh, medieval uh, theme. But um, no... I love it, love it to bits of it, really, um, really honoured. But but look, I, the, the overarching message is that I'm just a, a product of, of that environment. You know, I'm just a reflection of the people that I've been fortunate to have been surrounded by. Um, and you, you would all know, you know the characters that I'm talking about in, in Kevin Sinfield, in Jamie Peacock, in, in Rob Burrow, Danny Maguire, and a very, very special cohort of players who were both successful on the pitch, but probably in many ways more successful off it. And I think that group shines brighter now than it did on the field, which again is just testament to the, the culture uh, and the, the team spirit camaraderie that we had uh, as a group of men. That's really honest. So just tell us how you found out that you got an MBE and what was your reaction at the time? Yeah, I got um, obviously Kersal Training Grounds being it's been uh, redefined as a as a, an, elite, an elite rugby league training centre. It's always been a bit of a makeshift canoe and uh, squash club. So we've moved a fair few bits around, and there's a little bit of uh, temporary un uh, upheaval there. Uh, and my desk is in a new position at side of Sean Long. So just squeezed in past Longy, uh, said good morning to him, getting ready for a, another great, great day. And uh, Sarah Tate, our HR manager, walked in with a letter uh, with um, Majesty's service on it. Uh, and, and as I said before, you know, it's not usually good news when you get them in Bromley. So I opened it up thinking, I wonder what this is, uh, thinking it might be from Taxman or something like that. And uh, it quickly articulated that it was an invitation to uh, accept an MBE. So I was obviously blown away, massively honoured. And I just think um, this sort of stage of the year when you're going into Christmas and you're reflecting on what's been a really difficult 12 months, uh, a really sort of difficult 18 two months, two years, a period where I'm still transitioning from being uh, an ex-professional rugby league player and uh, an assistant coach and redefining who I am uh, as an individual, thinking about that next chapter of my life, going in from 40 to 60 year old. Um, you know, getting that letter was a, a really nice sort of punctuating end to what's been a real special chapter in, in my life. Uh, and, and an encouragement as well, I don't, I don't mind saying. You know, I'm surrounded by wonderful people and uh, it's not about personal like humility in there, but uh, that it sort of transcends sport as well. Um, a recognition from the state than it is a sporting one. I think it's actually a little bit more special. So that, that day... I was really fuzzy and warm, and I have been ever since. Uh, and it said, obviously, there's a bit of an embargo. You can't say too much. You've got to fill it for me. And I filled it in as soon as I got home. I sat down with my wife, told my wife. Uh, I told my grandparents as well, because my grandparents are late on in years. Um, and, you know, every day is a blessing for them. So I didn't want to be uh, really proud, as was my granddad, give, uh, give them uh, uh, and they were all excited. So, um, yeah, my kids only found out last night. 
But um, yeah, real, real honour and, and uh, real good experience. And obviously, the, the community work that you've done o- over a, l- a lot of years is a, is a huge part of this this honour that you've received. C- can you remember when you first got involved on that side of things, and, and how rewarding has that been for you over the time? Oh man, it's really rewarding. It's really important as well, and uh, I, I'm still learning why that is. Mechanically, I think we all get a sense of belonging when we're giving back, and uh, one of sort of phrases that I've been using recently about the gratitude that I've had to realise and fulfil a bit of my potential on the vehicle of sport is that you can't really repay it. You know, grace is a, it's, it's non-transactional in that you can't give back to the people that helped me on that journey, but I can pay it forward to the next generation of people and help others to be as good as they can be, to the best version of themselves. And, and I find myself in a lot of opportunities to be able to try and inspire young people and um other individuals who try and create pockets of opportunities for people who might be born into poverty or um, you know other circumstances through no fault of their own, just never get that chance to be as good as they possibly can be. So um, you know, to be able to do that and give somebody a chance to find their place in society only supports uh, everybody else exponentially. Uh, I, I can't articulate it as well as I, I read in a book recently called Tribe. Uh, and just really quickly, another segue, it was, this, this book starts off talking about the colonisation of America and why a lot of the Western colonists uh, migrated and, and joined Indian tribes and didn't want to come back. And there was a bit of social science in there and it was because everybody within a tribe has got a place, they've got an identity, they've got a role. Uh, and it helps from everything, from the, you know physical health to mental health right through but when we find ourselves isolated and without a role in society, um, we, we really struggle. And, and so does the tribe, so does the locality, so does that community. So, you know, whilst I'm sort of supporting uh, other people through what I've learned, it only serves to support my community and make it better uh, and create a, a better environment for my kids to grow up in. And, and mate, you know how proud I am about being a Leeds lad um, and the Bramley lad and rest of the other little uh, flags that I hold up. I just want it to be the best place in the world. You know, I want this to be the best place on the planet. And I, I, I've quite tongue in cheek said a few times, you know, if I woke up one morning and Leeds were the only place left in the universe, it, you know, in, in many ways it would be disappointing, but it won't change my day too much because everything that I hold there is uh, is 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 in Leeds. So there, yeah, it's been it's been the charity side of it, James, has been really important, and it's it's certainly important for me going forward as well. Jonesy, just finally for me, what would that young lad growing up in Bramley, that young boy, think if at that time you'd have told him that he'd be an MBE at the age of 40? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've always been quite cantankerous and uh, not very reflective or reflective. Um, I've been always looking for that next win. And uh, it's only probably the last t- t- couple of years when I've sort of really calmed down and, and let go of a little bit of that. I was talking to Danny McGuire, actually, from the same cloth, you know, me and him used to have some real battles uh, on the field on the same team. Actually, you know, sometimes pushing in opposite directions for the same cause. Um, but I think, you know, looking back, I'd say that I just always try my best, James. Just always try my best and see where that takes me. Sometimes my best won't good enough, and I accept that. Um, I'm just a local kid who, who again, was fortunate to have you know, played rugby and, and had some great experiences with other local kids like um, Jamie Peacock and Ryan Bailey and uh, Mark Caldwood and, and Ashley Gibson and a few more boys that have had a, a, a real good dig. Um, but again, I, I definitely see this as um, a reflection of, of the people that I've been surrounded by, not non, no, more so than my wife, who I can hear in the kitchen there, who's, you know, we've, been, we've been best of friends since I was 14, 15 years old, and uh, they say behind every good man is a, a great woman. Uh, and everything that I do do, you know, I couldn't do without a, a support and uh, and uh, and and friendship as well. So um, I, I very much, whilst you know, it's going to be three letters on the end of my name, it, it's on the end of our name. You know, we are we are the two became one flesh, and uh, we, we are very much uh, uh, symbiotic in that re- that regard. So the young kid from Bramley. Uh, I'd be proud as well, but be, always be thinking, you know, what's next? How can I use this to benefit my community and other people? You're joining a real, you know, elite band of 
of Rhinos legends there with an MBA thing. Simfield, Burrow and Peacock have all had, you know, uh, an award. And you were talking about them earlier. I mean, that's just an incredible group to be a part of, isn't it? It is. It is. And um, listen, I don't know what the stats are, but I, I, I'm guessing that that's an over-representation in, in a statistical point of view from uh, you know, how many people in Rubble League get recognised like that. And I think that just serves to underline and emphasise that, that group of individuals, that band of brothers, that environment that I keep talking about, um, which for me is, is why we were so successful. And I've always said that. I think I've always tried to articulate that. I wasn't always sure why, but there was always a benevolence and an altruism, a selflessness. And even this year, there was a, a, an Hall of Fame dinner. You know, Gary Edenton, is you know, is really good at putting on events where we sort of recognise some of our elite performers and our history. And Ken Simfield stood up and uh, just articulated why I miss him so much on a daily basis. And he says, it's amazing what he can achieve when nobody cares about who gets the credit. And, and I just thought, that's it. That, you know, that, that's always been it. The, the lads have just worked so hard on and off the field for one another uh, without any sense of um, entitlement, without any sense of, of wanting the credit for it. Very sacrificial and, and we've all benefited from that. We recognise that from an early, an early age. And, and I think, you know, in the office that I sit in now as a, an assistant coach, at Leeds Rhinos, that is the key underpinning message that I'm trying to articulate to our next generation of players, to Cam Smith, to Mikhail Ledsky, to Ash Hamley, um, Harry Newman, you know, that, that, that group of boys who are going to hopefully, God willing, carry that flag of the Leeds Rhinos in the uh, in, uh, next decade or two. Um, because for me, it's the underpinning and overlying reason why my generation was successful. successful. And whilst they'll be very different uh, on their journey, um, I think there are some really key messages that need taking forward and, and reasons why groups, individuals, tribes are successful. Uh, so so you're, right, you're right, you're right. And it, it, I think it just underlines uh, and pinpoints why m my my cohort was, was uh, you know, cut from that cloth and, and so successful. Yeah, and you, you have 20 fantastic seasons as a player at your hometown club. Now you seem to be enjoying yourself on the coaching staff. Obviously, you and Longy supporting Richard Agar. Have you got a desire to be a head coach one day, perhaps, Jamie? Or are you quite happy doing what you're doing? You're only 40, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good question, that. Um, I've been doing a high-cap apprenticeship, level four apprenticeship, UK sport, uh, and that's, that's intermingling with other coaches from all kinds of sports, from jiu-jitsu to Olympic rowing, to Olympic shooting and tennis. Um, and we've been going through what makes great leaders and leadership. Uh, and my ultimate goal in life is to be the best version of myself because you know who I was yesterday has got to, has got to contribute to who I am tomorrow. And I've got to keep asking that question, how can I be better? And then, and then serve the whole. Now, for me, it was really interesting that somebody said, well, you know, as your development continues as a coach, you might have to go somewhere else. And, and coach somebody else and other teams. And the, the thought of that has never, ever entered my mind. You know, I only ever played for one club. I only ever played for one community club, Stanley. I've always been very loyal in that regard. And my, my mission has always been for the furtherment of Leeds. And the obvious way to do that has obviously been through Leeds Rhinos um, and the city as well. So, uh, you know, I'm part of the, the city of culture, uh, at least 2023. Uh, I'm on board of Red Ladder Theatre Company. I'm a trustee at Leeds Rhinos Foundation. We do so much work with, with charities like Inspire North. And, 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 and my desire is to be a leader through self-development and helping other people to develop themselves. Um, so my, my big passion is human performance. Now, obviously, the, 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 the lens through which that manifests at the minute is as an assistant coach with the, the first team of Leeds Rhinos. And I want us to get back to winning trophies uh, and having that run of success, that dynasty that we've enjoyed uh, in the past. Does that mean that I want to be an head coach one day? Potentially, that, that might uh, manifest itself. Uh, I, I would definitely not rule that out. Um, got a lot of learning to do, and I've learned so much from Rich Agar, he's been fantastic. I've learned so much from Brian McDermott, Tony Smith, Brian McLennan, 
uh, and a plethora of other great coaches along the way. Steve McNamara is uh, international, international time. Um, and if I can, you know, make that conducive to my identity, as James W. Cannon, and serve that Rhinos badge, then absolutely. Do I want to be an head coach at another club? I, I'd say no at the minute. Um, it, it, it's always been about Leeds. And some of you might see that as being a bit short-sighted or naive even, um, but that's just how it is. Uh, and I know that sounds probably over-loyal. You know, you look at people like Steven Gerrard, for example, in football, tried to move about, you know, he's associated in Liverpool, um, uh, but for the furtherment of his, his career, he's had to move around. But you know, for me, it, it, it is rooted in leagues and I, and I struggle, probably much to my weakness, to see myself rooted in, in anything different.